Hey guys, uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, today we'll be uh, interviewing P Code X uh, in our uh, Staff Plus System Design interview channel. The question that we'll be going for is uh, reacting to live video. Uh, as you as you might have seen, uh, uh, people are allowed to react to live video with emojis and reactions and uh, uh, you might have used some of these services like LinkedIn's live video reaction or Facebook's live video reaction. The question is to design a system which lets people react and also lets the viewers see those reactions in real time. Um, sorry, but my uh, keyboard was uh, failing me. Um, yeah, so can you repeat the last uh, tense? Uh, please design a system that would let users react to live video with uh, mm -hmm. multiple reactions like likes or uh, favorites or hearts. And uh, people who are watching the live video should be able to uh, look at the reactions in real time. Uh, so that's something that uh, you might have seen in live video reactions. All right, so uh, I I just want to actually do some clarified questions here. So um, um, we are talking here that uh, we probably uh, it is uh, something new that we are developing, or is it something that uh, exists and maybe we're just trying to uh, push this new feature of uh, um, reaction? Um, cool. That's a great question. Let's assume that the live video system itself is available. The only thing that we'll be designing is the reaction to live video comments. Um, so the system that actually streams video to everybody is already available. The only thing mm -hmm. that you'll have to do is the system that uh, uh, people use to react to a live video stream. Perfect. All right, so uh, I want to actually start by uh, saying why uh, this uh, uh, type of reaction is uh, important. So I'm assuming that uh, um, uh, you want to track the engagement. Uh, so I'm just I want to actually push some success metrics here. So we know that uh, this is something that we are looking for at the end of the architecture, right? Um, so that is my assuming uh, assumption. And since uh, also that this is kind of a, a live uh, type of video, I can actually uh, um, also maybe assume that uh, uh, real time uh, really means like a very low latency, right? Um, the user should be able to see the reactions of other users as soon as uh, we could, right? Yes, yeah, this should be really low latency. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Assume uh, in sub milliseconds. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sub second in milliseconds. Yeah. Can I say like maybe translate that to maybe some P99, P99, uh, like the upper bound as 100 milliseconds? Yeah. Uh, uh, depends on what you define in that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So are you defining the amount of time it takes to post the reaction or whether it's end to end latency? Uh, mm -hmm. but uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, figure out multiple metrics, success metrics, and uh, start defining SLAs for those metrics. Okay. Uh, so uh, maybe real time uh, to put here uh, would uh, um, be like how many reactions I can actually do uh, per second, right? And um, that what might be very important as well. So, but let me just uh, uh, dive a little bit about the functional requirements. Maybe I can actually go to non-functional requirements and uh, I will go through that as, as uh, those SLAs. So here we are uh, seeing that the user will uh, um, send reactions and uh, other users will um, um, see uh, the reactions. Uh, Anything that uh, uh, 
uh, else that we could actually do uh, with that? Um, are we considering, uh, for example, commenting on the videos? Uh, for now, let's assume that that is not in scope. Uh, it's just, uh, we, we may add it in the future, but for now it's not in scope. Okay. Um, so um, is there, um, yeah, so trying to actually brainstorm other new function requirements here. Uh, um, I think that one of the things that would be very important to guarantee the success of this is uh, guarantee that uh, some constraints, because like uh, um, the videos will be displayed maybe by um, a lot of person, a lot of viewers, right? Uh, maybe we should actually guarantee that. But first uh, of all, let me start with that question. Like what is expectations about uh, the number of viewers and uh, if there is anything that we can assume about the number of reactions that uh, a user can actually do? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you can estimate it based on the number of viewers who are actually viewing the live video. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, let's assume that there are millions of viewers. Um, uh, events like uh, US Open Finals for tennis have uh, uh, tens of millions of users. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's assume that all these uh, uh, users react at least once or twice uh, to one of the events uh, that is happening. Uh, uh, so Right off the bat, uh, I also identify that uh, really uh, what is the biggest uh, uh, um, parameter on lo load here is uh, concurrent viewers, right? So, and uh, plus the uh, number of reactions. So this would actually be very interesting and uh, all those events uh, will be our uh, kind of a, a peak events, right? Um, so um, I would uh, say that uh, this is very important that this system is high available. Maybe we can talk about uh, maybe uh, three nines or do you think that it could be better? Yeah, so the general guideline here is to, uh, to look at five nines. Five um, nines. Five nines and uh, come into an SLA of uh, four nines. Uh, okay. So you can design the system for finance to make sure you meet the goal at uh, four nights. Okay. So basically, we are talking about one hour per year of downtime in four nights, right? And uh, um, okay. So low latency. Uh, let's talk about the SLAs that we are uh, we were we talked before. Um, what do you think uh, that would be the the SLA here, maybe on P99. Yeah, uh, so let's, uh, yeah, let's talk. I mean, uh, I, I would actually let you go ahead and define something uh, okay. for different success metrics because the success metrics here are different. Okay, uh, perfect. It might be the amount of time uh, that the system mm -hmm. takes to receive mm -hmm. uh, a reaction or mm -hmm. send a reaction or the end-to-end -end latency. So okay. I'd let, let you go ahead and define what the success metrics are and define SLAs for that. And yeah. if it's not something that is acceptable, I'll let you know. Yeah, okay. I think that uh, uh, maybe uh, 40 seconds uh, would be something that um, is good for maybe P50, but considering P99 uh, and global, maybe um, um, 100 milliseconds would wouldn't be that bad, um, but we can talk about maybe ways that we can minimize that. Um, so that's what uh, would be my assumption. Uh, and uh, 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 would would you clarify that a bit? Uh, what does that hundred millisecond include? Include that uh, uh, ninety nine percent of the the uh, um, requests uh, uh, could actually be seen, uh, like the the. Um, the, the round trip between uh, users sending uh, the um, 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 a reaction to the viewer actually receiving it uh, might take maximum. Yeah, because like it's a round trip, let's say that's 200 milliseconds. The, 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 the final cost of the round trip, uh, client to client to 
client to server yeah. and server to client. Um, okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So I asked this question because 100 milliseconds is generally uh, mm -hmm. really high bar that you said, and I'm not sure whether you would be able to meet that uh, given people can watch the live video from different continents and uh, you may end up in a situation where you never meet the uh, mm -hmm. meet the SLA because the round trip time from okay. uh, one one country to the other is greater than 200 milliseconds. So yeah, like okay. from uh, East Coast to West Coast, 140 milliseconds is what we usually calculate. So if we double that, maybe we can actually uh, say that is 300 milliseconds is a, a better estimation. And than. Do, do uh, realize that uh, this system can handle reactions from people who are outside of the US, right? Let's say there's a global mm -hmm. international event that is happening. There can be people who are reacting from Australia and the people mm -hmm. who are uh, uh, viewing the reactions from US if there are more than 20% uh, of the users who are in that situation, you'll never meet your SLAs. Yeah, okay. Um, um, yeah. So I, I, let's, let's uh, um, discuss yeah, about for now, this. Then, for now, yeah. I would say a, a better uh, a goal mm -hmm. would be to set something that is less than one second. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say, like 700 or 800 milliseconds for now and okay. uh, go from there. Uh, sure. All right. Um, so uh, here I would also say that uh, um, uh, one other thing that I, I didn't ask, like uh, uh, do we want to actually uh, count the number of likes or reactions that uh, um, uh, was given to some live video? Uh, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, for now, uh, not in scope. Maybe uh, stretch goal. No, not in scope. Yeah. Um, okay. So, all right. Um, so then, durability here is not really um, a concern. Uh, consistency, uh, and in this case, I, I will actually opt for eventual consistency, or um, because um, basically. Um, um, because we actually are trading off maybe uh, uh, um, the speed, uh, maybe uh, we should actually say that is a visual consistency because we are aiming to optimize for speed. Um, and I think that uh, those uh, will be probably fine. Um, so uh, also, I also identify that this will be a very IO bound. Um, so I would actually try to design uh, something thinking about that. How this is looking like, is there anything that uh, I cover that uh, maybe uh, you wanted to see? Yeah, one thing that uh, you can go more into is, uh, uh, is the notion of eventual consistency. What are you trading mm -hmm. off and what does this entail? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, if... What does this mean if you trade off consistency here, right? Yes, so uh, that really means that uh, I'm not really uh, uh, requiring any kind of transactions or guarantees that some uh, uh, ordering of the, the messages, right? So basically one user can uh, send a message and there is not uh, no guarantees that uh, the order that they are sending will be the same on the other uh, uh, side of the, the, the viewer, right? Uh, this is what I'm trading off here. Of course, that we will have the um, the times and we can actually maybe uh, have some reordering on the UI. Um, that, but that's overall what I, I'm, I'm trying to say. Um, and uh, yeah, so as we are not really uh, um, um, maybe storing that, I mean, we are just sending that, uh, that's something that uh, um, um, I'm, I'm not considering here. So that's... Um, what I mean about that eventual consistency. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a... Uh, so... When I yeah, use let's a, talk uh, about eventual consistency later, but it generally mm -hmm. means uh, uh, people won't be seeing the same, mm -hmm. uh, same data at the same mm -hmm. time. 
Perfect. Uh, yes. But eventually, when the reactions stop, they'll be eventually seeing the same data. And uh, okay. that probably might be a better definition of uh, uh, the reactions here. Uh, but let's continue and uh, discuss about eventual consistency at the end. Perfect. Um, so, okay. So um, here I would actually uh, want to actually uh, line up some challenges uh, so I can um, um, actually go to a high level definition. Before that, is there any other thing that um, um, you want to see here? No, we are good. Uh, in the interest of time, let's continue. We only have about mm -hmm. 25 minutes. Yeah. So uh, the first challenge, Sorry to disturb you. Can you please increase the font size a little bit? Um, the first uh, uh, challenge that I see here is how we want to actually send a message. Oh, um, for some reason it's fading this keyword. Um, send um, uh, reactions. Oh, uh, sorry, everyone. This is not working for me. Yeah, send reactions. Um, to other users. Um, I, I want to actually really start small and then increasing the complexity as we go. So I want to actually plan something that to send reactions to the users, uh, then uh, send, uh, uh, oh, send uh, reactions uh, to users that are seeing a type of video, um, and then uh, maybe how can actually um, um, manage uh, the connections, um, what kind of, uh, um, how can I scale um, the, 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 the receivers, um, scale um, the receivers. Basically what I mean here is that uh, we want to actually find a way that we can load balance uh, and maybe with the persistent connection that might be a challenge, receivers, um, yeah, I think that's where I would actually uh, uh, go. Um, so what I'm thinking here, and I would actually do a little bit different. I will uh, do the brainstorm on the uh, high uh, level design, and then I will um, write it to some APIs that would be important here. Uh, but uh, what I'm thinking that I could actually use is uh, um, first, uh, um, um, from HTTP poll or long polling or maybe web sockets, I think that I will go with uh, server site, site events, which is essentially uh, HTTP long polling. Uh, and basically uh, this is one of um, technology that uh, is wild adopted in many browsers. Um, you wouldn't find a lot of challenges in terms of firewalls or something like that. So that's why I'm, I'm thinking that I will uh, be using that. And um, essentially what I um, need to consider here is that um, because those connections will be persistent, I need to actually do, uh, um, I need to actually manage connections. So my gateway, uh, uh, which will be my kind of my front end for, um, um, those uh, uh, connections will be handling and managing all the connections for me. So in this scenario, I would just uh, um, write a client one and client two uh, to demonstrate uh, how this work actually work. And I will defend uh, why we could actually keep uh, the connections in memory. Um, um, and um, I will talk a little bit about that. So essentially here, what I'm uh, trying uh, what I am thinking is that a client that needs to react will subscribe. Um, and I can also uh, get back here. I just um, remember something about security uh, that is really important. Um, so to avoid any kind of a damage, like the client being a bad actor, uh, I should also assume that uh, um, um, maybe could actually assume that only logged in, logged in users would uh, use the platform, can actually assume that or not? Yes, you may assume that. Okay. That's but now let's important. get, mm -hmm. let's keep security out of the question because uh, that will, we'll be that holding into that. Uh, okay. Let's assume that uh, 
uh, you won't be able to send in these requests if uh, you don't have the right token. And there is mm -hmm. some other system that would reject these requests if the token expired or if there is a wrong token. Perfect. So, um, so when a um, um, client subscribe, um, and I can actually write to the API design here, um, uh, basically the gate will, will hold uh, two uh, important informations. And that would be the topic. Uh, in this case, since we are only considering videos, I would say the video ID, and then it will create a connection ID. Um, so basically this will be living on uh, the gateway. And uh, essentially when a, a client wants to, uh, let's say another client here, let's say wants to react, um, uh, the gateway will find uh, all the um, clients that are connected to uh, uh, that video ID and it will send the likes to uh, all the connected uh, um, clients. So this is very simple, right? Uh, and actually it will uh, uh, solve how we are actually, um, is there a way to strike through this here? Um, yeah, the, maybe it's not important, but I would just check it. Yeah, so this actually form a very simple way that uh, we could actually do that. And uh, also, uh, it, it might solve uh, a way that uh, some users see the video. Um, and then uh, let's see how we can actually manage better the connections and scale the gateways. Um, so, okay, so uh, as this increase, um, um, and more clients will be subscribing to videos, uh, a, a single gateway won't be able to actually handle that uh, uh, load, right? And um, I also want to actually clarify that uh, this would actually require, let's say, four bytes for, uh, I, would, I, I would actually go with uh, four bytes because the um, um, video is, is integer, maybe I can actually consider 16 bytes for uh, this uh, topo here. So it's very small sized and uh, the limitation of the scalability of this uh, can actually be other things like OS and uh, kernel. I can actually talk about that, um, but let's say that um, um, to actually handle millions of connections, right? Um, a million bytes here would be uh, 16 megabytes. Uh, so it, it wouldn't be what will be holding us into hold, hold a lot of um, um, uh, connections in this gateway, right? Um, so then uh, basically when we have more gateways, right? Uh, one of the challenges is that uh, the client will, will need uh, some sort of a, a load balancer um, to actually um, um, send, um, um, the data to the gateways and uh, this is fine because service sent events would actually play really well with the load balancer because it's a stream HTTP uh, is compatible with HTTP one um, so this would actually still work fine um, so when we have multiple gateways um, um, the problem then will be uh, how can I locate uh, which gateways will have which uh, connection IDs and maybe uh, what is really important is the video IDs, right? Um, the way that I am thinking is to actually have another component of the system called dispatcher. And uh, this dispatcher then will hold the data of uh, how uh, um, the video IDs and uh, which gateway uh, um, are holding uh, the connections for um, 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 th th those videos, right? Uh, and essentially when there is a subscription here, um, the gateway will also subscribe into the spot and saying, hey, I have uh, uh, subscribers to that video. Um, um, and then what will happen is that whenever I have a reaction and I will actually, um, can actually uh, draw a new path here. Uh, whenever I react, um, then uh, um, 
I will be looking um, to, uh, this would actually go and send the data to the dispatcher. By the way, the reaction here, we don't need uh, to have the, uh, <clears throat> we don't need to actually use this persistent connection and that can actually be just a normal post. Uh, and, uh, and this post would actually be to uh, the dispatcher. So, and then the dispatcher will actually see, uh, okay, maybe the gateway one or gateway two or N gateway have those connections and then it's distribute back um, um, the right reactions. So that solves the challenge of uh, scaling the um, gateways. I have um, one quick question here. Mm -hmm. uh, so in here, you are assuming that a particular gateway can hold uh, all the data for a particular video ID, right? The list of connections. Uh, yeah. So in this case, we, I will have many, uh, but we can talk about how many gateways I would need uh, as we we go. Uh, I can defend uh, that um, as well if it's important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah, let's finish the design. I have questions about uh, gateway failure, given that a particular video can be super popular. And uh, if a gateway goes down, how would you handle uh, things like reconnects and stuff? Uh, mm -hmm. But let's reserve the question for uh, uh, when you actually get into a deep dive of the design. Sure, so the last thing that I will need to do is actually, um, um, I will also need to scale the dispatcher, right? And uh, although the, 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 uh, this information is very uh, uh, small, um, um, the problem is that if I lose a dispatcher, then um, um, this would be bad. Because for the gateway, um, since it's a session-based, if I lose the connection, uh, the clients can be enhanced with the power of uh, retry the connection, then we would actually have another connection there. So we would be good. But for dispatcher, that's not true. And for scaling the dispatcher, right, um, we would need to, uh, um, um, we will need to actually offload that subscription table to uh, uh, maybe a, uh, um, key value store. And since the data is really small, uh, we can actually talk uh, about maybe it, it could be a Redis, uh, but it, it could be any um, other uh, um, distributed key value like Couchbase, um, um, depending on uh, the, 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 um, the traffic. But I think that uh, Couchbase would be more robust. Um, we, we, of course, uh, in memory here would be uh, work faster, but um, there are some durability guarantees here um, that might be um, a really good component on, uh, on not losing the dispatchers. So this is, is my high level uh, uh, design. Um, and I think what um, is important here um, uh, for the API design, um, it's really to uh, basically uh, base uh, endpoints, subscribe, um, and that would actually receive maybe uh, a header with the authorization token, uh, and then uh, the video that you want to subscribe. And uh, in uh, another hand, maybe we can actually have another post um, which is uh, the React, and then we can actually say uh, the emoji that we want to actually react. Um, and uh, um, we can actually say also the video um, here. Um, and we actually need as well the um, authorization token. All right. Um, I think that is in high level design. That's most hey, uh, what I would need. Quick time check. You have 15 more minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, let's get into the details of the design. 
uh, mm-hmm. I'm interested more in the uh, details of uh, what component would you use, how we would store the data, and uh, uh, why you are taking choices. Uh, you right away mentioned Couchbase, right? Uh, why Couchbase? Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, and and let's get to a deep dive of this design. Perfect. Uh, so um, let's talk a, a little bit about one of the really important things for guarantee a, a very uh, a robust gateway layer. Um, and uh, this is really like uh, where uh, for this uh, 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 lo- amount of load, if you actually use uh, sync IO, uh, this would actually be really bad. You wouldn't be able to actually hold a lot of connections here. So to really make sure that we have a, a, a good throughput, uh, we need to have um, a sync IO. And uh, the technologies that I'm considering for here is maybe Erlang or Akka. Uh, which is based on actor's model. And um, basically uh, with those uh, um, um, technologies, you have uh, uh, behaviors, uh, um, you have essentially a state being driven by event queues. And those event queues actually, uh, um, um, this is an actor, right? And, or a process in uh, Erlang. And in those technologies, there is a concept called supervisor. Uh, so this is what uh, the technology that we will need to stream data back uh, to the clients. Um, essentially, um, here on the supervisor, uh, whenever I get a message uh, saying, hey, I need to actually react to this video, here's my react, uh, and, uh, and send to all the uh, um, connections that you have that subscribe to that video. So essentially the super supervisor will uh, do the phone off uh, to all the other process that are um, there. Um, right. Um, and uh, um, so this is how it would actually work uh, really well. And you can see that uh, although uh, we can actually hold many million connections here, uh, the fun off because it's uh, from supervisor to all the process happens in a, a fast way uh, because it broadcasts the messages. And also uh, then uh, the other side of the fun off which is for, from the hey, uh... dispatcher uh, a quick question. So, would you go a bit more into uh, this? Is one of the uh, uh, one of the challenging problems that we are discussing? Um, mm-hmm. uh, I have a couple of questions here. First, Erlang is generally a language. Is there a technology uh, that you you generally use for I think IO? Uh, and uh, could you also go into uh, why synchronous IO is problematic? And what is it IO here is? Uh... Mm-hmm. Yes. So basically, if you actually uh, have sync IO, uh, you uh, will um, be blocking um, your segments of execution. And that would probably limit the number of connections that you can hold. Right? Uh, versus in async IO, you can actually have some uh, um, a pool of uh, threads um, um, looking for all the sockets that are open and see if there is messages to be sent or, or to receive, right? So in this one, uh, uh, you would be able to actually uh, have way more connections than uh, SyncIO because of this, this uh, uh, weight and suspension that is caused by uh, the kernel, yeah. Okay, yeah. So basically, uh, if you are using synchronous I/O, you are limited by the number of threads that uh, the system supports, uh, the physical threads that the kernel uh, actually has support for. And as yes. I/O, you don't have that limitation. Cool, that's good. And uh, yeah. so Erlang OTP is the technology that supports uh, uh, as I/O. Is it like Netty for Java? 
Yes, uh, that is like a uh, native for Java, but Lang actually have um, uh, in OTPs the framework. Um, so basically, it works a little bit. It's very similar to Akka. Uh, so you have uh, your actors being the process. And what is good about uh, the OTP supervisor is that you can actually uh, monitor all the processes that are connected to a very robust uh, uh, terminal. And you can recycle process. You can really maintain uh, the, the, the connections there uh, in a, um, a way powerful way than ACA would provide uh, in terms of a management layer, right? ACA is really uh, robust. And I think that uh, I don't have all the uh, um, experience with that. But as you mentioned, I think that it works on top of Netty, right? Uh, and also it uh, works similar, uh, similar there. There is an IO, uh, uh, a sync IO as well. And you can, you have actors and then those actors have the event queues. And when the supervisor of uh, ACA uh, will push a, a message, right, uh, a react, um, this actually go to the event queue of the process. And uh, when it receives the, the uh, uh, react of the message, then it flushes to the socket that is connected to that process. Okay, yeah. So Netty and Akka are different programming models. Let's actually discuss it at the end in the mm -hmm. interest of time. Okay, uh, perfect. Currently, uh, let's actually dive deep into the dispatcher and the KV couch base uh, uh, data layer that we were talking about uh, sure. uh, in the interest of time. We actually have seven minutes and mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's actually dive deep into uh, the data model that you are using, why you are using this data model, and uh, how you would uh, store the data. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, in here, I, I really simplified uh, the data model for uh, the gateway, because basically this uh, will be in memory. And, um, um, and the reason for be in memory is uh, because of the uh, like the the session uh, based kind of uh, connection there for the dispatcher right. Uh, I think that the only thing that I uh, consider was really like uh, the video ID and the gateway ID uh, because um, uh, basically from the dispatcher I just need to know what are the gateways that subscribe to me that have some video. Uh, and I don't need to know nothing about which connections that they are holding. Uh, so that's, that makes it very efficient uh, because that tuple is also uh, only eight bytes and it would actually uh, be sufficient to distribute the message to all the gateways. Uh, for the key value here, um, um, I think uh, that couch, couch base would be a great choice um, because um, essentially uh, you will be able to uh, uh, have a powerful um, management uh, layer. I think that's a little bit better than Redis, but in here, I would say that uh, um, um, the trade-off would be for the speed because um, um, Redis would actually maintain this in memory, so you can actually have a, a better throughput. Um, so because of that, maybe I would actually uh, take that back because we are optimizing for speed. And uh, maybe uh, because this is very small and we actually want to optimize for speed, Redis would actually be uh, uh, sufficient to actually hold that. And uh, couch base because of the data model, Maybe one would be a, a good choice here. Redis would be a good one because it would actually uh, provide a, a lower latency. I think that I didn't also went to different data centers. Uh, I think that there's still five minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know if you want me to uh, also go to that. Yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, we need to go a bit more into the design, but uh, a couple of things that I am interested in are mm -hmm. Uh, one, uh, what happens uh, uh, if there is a failure in a gateway, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say, uh, would the gateway ID change and how would that affect the data that is being stored? Uh, sure. uh, the yeah. next is, uh, uh, how would you 
um, solve. Um, so let's say one gateway uh, goes down, right? Uh, I'm assuming that uh, that gateway holds the connection IDs for all the connections uh, pertaining to a video ID, assuming uh, you have enough memory in there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's say a stream is really popular and uh, there are millions of people watching it and suddenly the gateway crashes because of an unforeseen uh, circumstance uh, yes. and uh, uh, how would you handle uh, uh, reconnects here uh, uh, millions of connections coming back uh, again to potentially the same gateway that is booting up uh, would essentially take down the system and uh, uh, would render the system unusable here yeah, so in that in that scenario, that's why we actually uh, don't want to actually, even though like those those gateways with proper configuration can actually hold a million uh, uh, like million connections. You want to actually be uh, uh, using more gateways. So then uh, you would actually be able to, uh, if a, a gateway fail fail, and then uh, all the clients of those uh, uh, gateways reconnect because. Another thing that we or actually I, I should have said here is that the same server sent uh, events could actually be used for other types of events. And one of the events that we could actually provide is a heartbeat. And uh, uh, so in this way, gateways would actually know if there's uh, any errors in the client and then can actually clean up the connections that are there and in case of the gateway fails what will happen is that those clients will reconnect uh, through that load balancer and load balancer will know exactly which gateways are active because of health checks and then uh, uh, the the new clients will be balanced out to the remaining gateways so that would not be a problem uh, it would still be a problem if there are too many connections coming into a particular gateway right uh, I'm not sure what the order, uh, the number of connections here is. Uh, the general guideline is to uh, is to add some sort of a jitter uh, to ensure you don't reconnect at the same time. Uh, that's something that uh, you may want to consider. Uh, mm -hmm. The second thing is, uh, what is this dispatcher? Is, is it an in-memory store? And if it's an in-memory store, why do you need Redis, which is again an in-mem in plus persistent store? Okay, so the dispatcher, uh, uh, like I said, could actually hold the, the data in memory, but in because of the characteristics of that, uh, we cannot do that, right? So if we lose exactly which gateways are holding which videos, then uh, then we we won't, we won't probably uh, can't do uh, the dispatch of the events anymore. So in that in that sense, we offload this data to uh, a distributed database. So if the dispatcher dies, uh, other dispatches will be able to actually uh, handle the same uh, 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 dispatching uh, uh, um, needs because it essentially will read from Redis where the gateways are, and then we can actually dispatch things again. So that's uh -huh. why we 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 want to actually offload that data to uh, a distributed um, data store. Yeah. yeah, in that case, you can just use uh, multiple shards in Redis, right? Why do you need a dispatcher going to uh, Redis? I'm assuming that the data is too huge for a single shard of Redis. So you anyway need multiple shards. Why not just remove the dispatcher and use multiple shards of Redis to store the data? Uh, because uh, two things. Uh, First of all, single of responsibility, uh, gateways are only responsible to maintain uh, persistent connections and send messages back to the uh, uh, users. The second thing is about uh, what Redis uh, uh, um, um, is uh, here. So uh, really like shards of Redis uh, can be some way to scale, but let me just open the eyes again about the how small this data is. So if you are talking a uh, uh, 1 billion connections, we are talking about uh, um, a gigabit of memory, right? And uh, um, this is like 1 billion connections. So um, I could actually use have uh, um, um, not a lot of shards to actually hold all the, the, the data that this dispatcher uh, needs. Because again, 
uh, this dispatcher will have way less fun out than actually the gateways. The gateways will have probably uh, billions and uh, and connections, but the 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 data that the dispatcher needs to hold is way less, right? Because we are essentially just saving the numbers of videos online and the gateways that are uh, uh, holding the connections for for some videos. So the fun out here is way less, and um, so again, um, I think that one of the key things here is responsibility. Uh, if the gateway goes down, I don't want it to be populated with another responsibility to actually see all the other the subscriptions that are there in the other gateways and offload these to a more hierarchical component, like top level component. Okay, yeah, that's great. Uh, I, yeah, we ran out of time. Uh, it's mm -hmm. time for uh, going into some uh, feedback and also let the uh, uh, people who are listening in ask questions. Um, so let's consider the interview done at this point in time. So, and uh, any uh, any updates that are uh, done to the design after this is not considered for uh, for evaluation. Okay. Yes, that's that's. Uh, so uh, guys who are listening in, uh, so I'll take some time to actually write some feedback and. Uh, uh, reflect on things. Uh, would you actually uh, go in and ask questions if you uh, if you may have? Yeah. So uh, this is, by the way, I just want to actually mention that this is like uh, based on a LinkedIn um, blogs. Um, so I would actually um, I can actually refer some data that is studied about this um, architecture. Yeah, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. So one question, like, I mean, uh, you were using uh, Redis, right, for the in-memory cache. Why didn't we use any other persistent storage DB? Like, what was the reason for this? Uh, yeah, so uh, when uh, Z actually challenged me about that, I took that back on, on the uh, couch base. And essentially like the, the biggest thing that I, I want to actually uh, keep bringing up is how much, is, uh, how small that data is. Um, so that's important. So for 1 billion connections here, uh, and it, this means that uh, we have 1 billion gateways. So that's, <laughs> uh, oh, I, I mean, 1 billion live videos and that's maybe too much, but we would actually, uh, um, would need kind of uh, eight gigabytes, right? So this is very, very small. Um, the reason that I'm offloading this to Redis, it's really that uh, dispatches can come and go without uh, uh, issues. Um, so they, the, the data is always in Redis and I segregate uh, the design in um, two responsibilities. One is to figuring out which gateways I need to contact Another responsibility is uh, to broadcast the messages to the final uh, client. Yeah, and okay. Redis here will be very fast, right? So we don't need to actually go mm -hmm. to disks and uh, nothing like that. Uh, so this would actually maintain a very a good uh, throughput and performance here. And secondly, there was Question for popular video, right? So can't we shard it based on the video ID? Like what was your solution I missed it? Like uh, if any such popular video is there, you'll be hitting a lot of likes, right? So yeah. do we use any kind of sharding or anything? So uh, for, uh, in terms of uh, sharding here, um, so um, I think that the sharding for the Redis would be more playing out uh, as, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't even do a proper sharding here because of how much small that data is, uh, again, uh, for the dispatcher. So I would really maintain copies of the entire data for multiple readies. Imagine that the data is really, really small. Um, so the, the readies would actually just be uh, uh, replicated just to achieve high availability and not because of really, we want to actually put maybe uh, better reads or 
uh, rights. It's just because uh, of availability on that case, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so for I have got one question for gateway, like, are we considering primary and backup? Um, like, and if uh, like some suppose one gateway fail fails, then we are going to use logical name, same so that like dispatcher doesn't have to change anything. And then new connections are routed uh, after from pri primary to backup, uh, like for each gateway, have a backup in other data center, something like that. Yeah, so I, I didn't go to the data center part, which was really bad because I, I took a lot of time in other things. But uh, um, essentially, when we are talking about uh, multiple uh, data centers, what will happen is that we, we need a service discovery layer, right? Um, and the service discovery uh, will uh, maintain the peers of the dispatchers in other data centers. And uh, what happens in that case is that every time that there is a subscription uh, um, on the dispatcher, uh, we also, uh, um, th there's two ways, right? Uh, we could actually uh, subscribe uh, in and make the uh, readies of the other data centers get that message, maybe through a stream processor here, but there, there will be latency. And another way that LinkedIn does is really broadcast all the subscriptions to all dispatchers in the other data centers. That's how they do it, yeah. And the reason that this is okay, again, is because the data is really small. Uh, and also like, are we not going to store the React ID uh, and the user ID or gateway ID contains the user ID because we talked about like users will be logged on but we did not mention anything about the react id uh, and uh, since we are only storing it in red redis right now are we going to permanently store in some database or we Perfect. keep it in redis only that that's great that's why i i've uh, actually talked about should we have a count should we uh, store the number of things and uh, that was kind of the stretch we, we didn't get there but if you had to actually do that then probably we would actually need uh, maybe some sort of a, a fun off of uh, the messages. Maybe dispatcher can also uh, would actually send something in um, the stream and then it could actually be consumed and then uh, uh, pushed into another database that will be only responsible for uh, really uh, uh, um, maybe storing the reactions and the IDs and all of that. Yeah, so, but but the, the reactions here, I didn't actually push in the, on, on my explanation because it's part of the message that uh, goes to the web interface, right? So when we are actually talking about service set events, uh, the browser will have um, um, an API like that. So it's an event source and uh, um, a URL here. Oh, sorry. The keyboard is not... Um, helping me so you, you would actually have a url here and basically with this um, um, uh, object you can have uh, on message uh, event and basically how you would actually interpret inter interpret uh, this message it's uh, the client that would do that so essentially here you can stream uh, you can stream uh, heartbeat um, comments, uh, um, the reactions, and uh, the client will be responsible to render that in the appropriate way for the user. An another thing that uh, I have doubts and we could actually discuss is how we could actually build a timeline. So let, uh, and with that, I mean, imagine that you see a video, right? Um, um, and then uh, that was live, live session. Uh, I don't know if LinkedIn and Facebook keeps us a, a, a history of everything that happened on that live uh, video. And uh, I was uh, going through that and um, my answer for that, for that would be um, uh, a fun out from the dispatcher. Uh, so then we could actually ag uh, consume uh, what is happening there and maybe build a, a timeline of the video uh, in um, other um, 
other like other layer yes um for a really popular video do you think that one redis machine would be enough to handle all the right traffic yeah so uh you can check uh the linkedin blog uh and uh there is a a video on youtube uh about that so essentially linkedin uh i think that the uh it could actually um hold 24 million uh concurrent connections open for i think it's it was a cricket game or maybe a royal wedding i don't remember because i studied that it was a while back uh, but they actually achieve that number with uh, an architecture like that because again redis wouldn't hold all the uh 24 million uh, connections or whatever it's happening there the Hattie, redis only will hold which gateways all right which gateways uh um, are responsible for that video the fun out here it's way less um and the data here is uh, way smaller than what hap is happening in the gateways okay so i have a couple of questions uh, so when you say dispatcher it dispatches the event right the right way the what sorry uh dispatcher uh, the role of dispatcher is to broadcast uh, all the events to all the gateways, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, why does uh, why does your post uh, endpoint, you know, your post endpoint need to go through load balancer and then gateway and then uh, dispatcher? So why can't it directly go into dispatcher and then because the role of dispatcher is again dispatch to the local gateways, right? To all the gateways. So this, uh, what I, yeah, so need to be way better here. Sorry about not uh, doing a good job here, guys. Uh, I'm, maybe you were expecting too much from me, but uh, yeah, so what I try to actually do here uh, is um, essentially uh, have two moments. So this moment is the subscribe portion, right? Where a user is uh, coming online, see a video and then when it clicks on that video uh, we do the subscribe portion and that's a post and on that way what happens there is that this post will have a content a, a set header uh, that is uh, the event stream um, um, basically this will, will make the SSA uh, true function, but uh, server set, sent events, it's only uh, about receiving message from the server to the client. Whenever you, you want to actually uh, do the inverse, the client needs to actually do anything, then we'd actually need another endpoint. So that's what I uh, was trying to actually represent here with this uh, slash post react, because it will be another endpoint that maybe will go directly to the dispatcher. Yeah, uh, it, it needs to directly go to the dispatcher, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then it will uh, the client will establish a connection of the gateway, like the load balancer sends the gateway, and then we process that right? Yeah. Yeah. In in this uh, case, the URL uh, the URL for the service here would be different, right? Uh, and um, yeah, and we'll, we'll go to the um, or we we can even say like based based on the path, you uh, the if you, it's a uh, uh, layer seven uh, load balancer, we can actually uh, send that uh, um, request to the dispatcher directly. Yeah, because initially in the requirements, you you, you also talk about P99, right? It was mm -hmm. under three seconds. So mm -hmm. uh, if you have this many overheads, then it's very hard to achieve, right? Uh, yeah, so here's what I think. Um, um, the devil on the p99 that i i uh, we, we were discussing it was very very low like z was trying to hit me out uh but um um because that if, if you consider that this it's really like what what is 
limiting you is really the latency of your um, physical layer um, um, because there's not a lot of hops here. Uh, and um, so this is the faster that I, I can think that it, it could no, actually do. No, 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 uh, we initially discussed it's, uh, it's a global video, right? It's like mm -hmm. someone, someone from US is uh, like posting the video, and uh, we are from India watching it. Mm -hmm. This is a definite. Uh, yeah. uh, Latency will do increase right, with regions. Yes, you are totally right. Um, so uh, what I um, have, I, I, I mean, very, I may be very bad on that, but what I uh, have as a knowledge uh, is that uh, to um, a request go through from East, um, from US to Europe, to Amsterdam, it takes 140 milliseconds. I might be wrong on that, uh, but if you consider that um, to the entire global, yes, it could actually be a way, uh, this is like the baseline if everything goes really, really well, right? And maybe it can be a hop from Amsterdam to India, and that will be adding to the latency. Um, um, yeah, so that's why like uh, uh, Z proposed a, a way higher number, and I agree with that. Yeah. And one more thing, uh, uh, I mean, there's a lot going on in the gateway, right? Uh, there, there's even queues. Uh, the uh, process which continuously uh, serving that clients. There's the, a the connection, this is a connection, right, for each client. Um, there is a persistent connection for each client, and you're right. Um, and yeah, and that's why like Erlang and Akka as well is very performant on on that um, responsibility. Uh, I, I feel you should uh, you, uh, you could avoid naming the services, but talk in general terms, like what goes on rather than like okay going with some specific service. You know what what really ha what's happening inside the service. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me uh, try to explain better then. So uh, in Akka and oh, so do, do you want to know what happens inside the gateway, right? Yeah, I'm assuming that there are event queues and then uh, there's a long, long polling rate here itself, both, both the things. Okay, so the long polling, it's really like, um, it's a persistent connection that is not being closed by the server, right? The server keeps streaming data all and on. So this part uh, makes a persistent connection, but like I said, uh, well, the way that, I understand that socket works is that uh, whenever you have something that to be read, um, there is a signal from uh, the the kernel, right? And uh, you can block that, right? Essentially, like when you read um, uh, and if you block, what means that the thread will only go to the next part of the code if uh, you read some data. On IO, uh, async IO, that's not what happens. Uh, what happens on a sync IO is that you do a select on the socket, right? And uh, the select on the socket might be that you could have data, you could not have data. And that is really powerful because you can have a single thread scanning a lot of sockets at the same time. So is this part clear there? Um, because that is really important to understand what the supervisor does and yeah, yeah. how the process works. Uh, I mean, assumption that I think I go uh, from the perspective of dispatcher, not in, in inside the gateway for the connection. Okay, so this one, uh, it's like I said, the fun off is way smaller, right? It's for the gateways. Let let's let's try to actually put some numbers here. So. Uh, um, like in that scenario that I explained on the royal wedding with 24 million, uh, oh, LinkedIn, right? Uh, the, the panel can be bigger depending on, let's say, a specific country. Uh, uh, the people in a specific country may be watching more, you know, like that's a billion people watching from India. Yeah, I, I do it, send that means that you have a lot of gateways and. Uh, yeah, so if uh, the troop of, of gateways uh, that was defended by um, that it's defended by LinkedIn. It's 100K uh, uh, connections, right? And uh, um, 
let, let's actually talk about the, uh, like the entire population of the world. I don't know. Um, At this point, I also want to ask one question is that the gateway is also regional. I believe it is regional. Yes, it's regional. Yes. So th this uh, um, same architecture here, and that's why it's very simple, right? Uh, and uh, LinkedIn uh, defends the, the simplicity of that architecture. So yeah, but, uh, yeah. the same thing is replicated to another data center, right? And what okay. happens for uh, a one communicates to the other is really a broadcast for uh, that is from, from the dispatchers through the service discovery layer that I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, if you if you see uh, if you see from the cost point of view also that you can't like spin up gateways as you want, right? Because you might be you might be underutilizing the gateways. You said there's a hundred k connections, right? You might be confident in that. So you might be un underutilizing those connections, depending on the users, no? uh, users uh, who are watching from uh, from that region. Um. Okay. So, all right. Um, if something unplanned happens, right? Um, yeah, you will be able to actually scale the gateways fast. I'm assuming that this uh, layer uh, here, um, yeah, yeah. I, I would say that I don't know how they actually uh, scale the, the gateways fast. My opinion yeah. is that. That this this layer is really small, and, and and I think that this you're considering that this is really uh, big, but uh, I I want to actually give you some other numbers, right? So uh, the record of a single machine uh, of uh, holding connections in WhatsApp, for example, which is way way uh, how can I say the scale of WhatsApp is way bigger than what I'm 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 talking here. It's two million connections per gateways. And to achieve that, they do a lot of work in the kernel wise, because uh, let, let me talk a, a little bit about how you can actually go from 10K to 100K. This itself is a huge challenge. So uh, you would- base I, I, understand this. Uh, I understand this. My question was, you know, uh, the way I understood it, uh, the gateway, you know, it's pretty scalable in nature that, you know, you could speed up and mm -hmm. then, there, uh, it could serve all, which is pretty fine. But my question was uh, on the cost perspective, perspective that you can you cannot like spin as many as you want. Right? You you should be considering the local, uh, the regional wise users. Right? based on those, not all gateways would be same. It would be pretty. Uh, uh, it it would be already configured. Right? The machine would be this much, you know, in terms of memory and CPU. So based yeah, you. Uh, you mean that some regions might uh, uh, not be well utilized? Yes, I, I, I'm sure that uh, it, what you're stating is uh, true, but I, in my opinion, uh, what happens on those companies is that they actually really think about uh, uh, capacity uh, planning there, and you wouldn't have a, a DC per country. You would have DCs per regions that make sense. Like maybe you would have some some in in India or or China because there is a lot of people there. Uh, uh, but maybe you don't you don't have a lot of uh, of uh, other data centers in in some not well populated. Uh, um, yeah, um, that's regions, why uh, right? in the case of WhatsApp, it actually like uh, uh, use one big server, you know, instead of like multiple small servers. They uh, they modify it to like to take like 3 million hey guys, mm -hmm. hey, uh, while it's a great discussion, I think we are running out of time here. Let's uh, uh, discuss this later if we have time at the end. Uh, I am ready to actually go into some feedback for people. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt here. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, let's go. Uh, <laughs> hey, cool. Um, yeah, uh, uh, hey, thanks for actually coming in and uh, uh, spending time to uh, to interview and also help uh, folks uh, uh, get better at interviewing. Uh, uh, mm. uh, yeah, <laughs> regarding the feedback, I think uh, you did uh, decent. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I'll go into uh, the uh, goods and bads of uh, things and where you can improve on. Uh, in general, I felt that you really scoped the problem well. Uh, you specifically asked uh, what needs to go into the design, uh, 
uh, what we need to design for uh, the the uh, the cardinality and also things like hey do you want to design for count and things like that i really like that because that generally drives the design and particularly if you're a senior engineer people expect you to scope things out first uh, instead of uh, um, assuming something and uh, uh, um, uh, designing based on assumptions which uh, generally doesn't work in a work in a real world uh, setup uh, that's really great. Uh, I like that you defended the design based on data and numbers instead of just a gut feel uh, saying that, hey, you know what, it would work. You actually uh, went into uh, uh, calculating things and uh, defending that, hey, you know what, a particular gateway could uh, hold millions of connections, which is really great. And that's something that is expected. Uh, giving in data and defining the design is something that we uh, really expect senior engineers to do. Uh, and uh, you had a really good understanding uh, of a real world system, which essentially did that. And that is useful as well. Um, uh, even though you don't have to mention that this is based on a real world system, uh, reading blogs and uh, having that experience uh, really helps uh, design better systems. Uh, instead of coming up with a design that is not uh, proven in the real world, uh, taking uh, inspiration from other real world designs uh, really uh, is, is the right way to go. Uh, you also asked a good clarifying questions on non-functional requirements and functional requirements, for example, security, right? Uh, you explicitly asked whether security needs to be included when I said no. Uh, and you also went into the challenges for the system, uh, what would limit the system, and uh, uh, you had a really clear view of uh, uh, what challenges uh, would would be there. This uh, speaks into uh, into uh, uh, into experience that you uh, generally have on system design. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, you also went into uh, multiple technologies like Erlang OTP, ACA, and uh, you were able to kind of uh, go into a high level on uh, what these are and uh, when these will be used. You also had good numbers, uh, ballpark numbers on um, how many connections a particular gateway would uh, handle. Uh, ha having something on the ballpark is really useful uh, instead of actually th uh, throwing a number uh, right at the spot. Uh, these are things that I really liked about it. Uh, about the design and the approach that you had for uh, system design. Uh, okay. On things that you could have done better, uh, one thing that uh, I see is uh, coming up with a realistic SLA is really important. Uh, okay. And uh, always think about multi-region setups. Uh, those are really common these days. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you cannot think about multi-region latencies uh, after designing a system because people will expect you to actually go live in another country as soon as it is ready in one country. So uh, thinking about multi-region, for example, uh, coming up with a I mean, 100 millisecond SLA would really be a no-go because you wouldn't be able to do that in a multi-region, uh, multi-country setup. Uh, and uh, I, I like people who actually go into estimations. It's an uh, I mean, I have uh, heard different viewpoints on this, but uh, at least having some ballpark estimations would help you drive the design while you actually went to yes. some numbers yeah. later. I would say mm -hmm. at least have uh, have this uh, mindset that, uh, uh, hey, I would use ballpark estimations to drive the design. And mm -hmm. uh, that a lot of companies expect you to do it that way. Uh, one thing that you could have done better is coming up with multiple options and uh, uh, clearly mm -hmm. speaking out pros and cons for each option and why you would use something. For example, you could have gone into um, web sockets, uh, SSEs, and uh, uh, and also uh, just a regular long pole and why you are using SSEs. Uh, at least the pros and cons of uh, um, uh, using SSEs uh, would have been better because we mm -hmm. expect senior engineers to evaluate multiple design options and come up with something based on the particular scenario. So SSEs mm -hmm. might be a good option for this 
uh, design, but not for others. And why would you use SSEs for this particular design as something that uh, you want people to go into? Yeah. Uh, I should have written that. Uh, I, I tried to actually just say hi. Uh, I, I would go with service sent events because it's a technology that uh, works uh, uh, with old browsers and uh, there's no like framework of firewalls or, or problems involved on that layer. Um, that should have been more well clear for sure. Yeah, thanks for that. Okay, cool. And uh, for example, you directly jumped into KB and touch base, right? So there are two layers here. First is uh, coming up with uh, why uh, coming up with reasons for why you, you use KV and uh, what other database uh, technologies, database uh, uh, types are there, right? Like why no relational database? And at some point in time, relation is not a bad idea. Uh, um, and I have seen systems which would work perfectly fine with the relational databases. So you can actually come in to have things in mind on why relational, why KV and uh, why graph databases, right? And then like talk about why you are using KV for this case. And even in KVs, there are multiple types of KVs, right? There is Bitcoin stores, there are, uh, there are uh, uh, document databases. Uh, uh, there are a lot of things, right? And why you uh, started choosing Couchbase, right? And you actually started with Couchbase and then like uh, moved on to Redis while you actually mentioned the reason for that. It would have been better if you had thought about uh, uh, these options earlier and zeroed in on the right option instead of actually like going back when the interviewer champ is here. Uh, mm -hmm. The next is something that I really wanted uh, you to think about. Uh, so this video, right, and live streams, uh, you do not know beforehand how many people would join. So I didn't see uh, thinking and uh, design about uh, how would you solve the problem of organically growing uh, uh, live stream users, right? So you yes. had a mapping uh, from, uh, um, you had a mapping, I think, from uh, uh, from video ID to gateway ID, I guess. And mm -hmm. uh, let's say the gateway, ID, uh, I mean, a particular gateway, you would you would have multiple uh, videos uh, in, a in a gateway ID, I presume. And mm -hmm. uh, in that case, in that case, how would you uh, how would you change the video ID if it goes increasingly popular? How would you avoid noisy neighbor problems, right? Let's say a video got popular yes. and mm -hmm. uh, there are other uh, videos posted at the same gateway. How would you solve that problem? This is something yeah. that uh, even though I mean, even if you hadn't solved the problem, I would expect you to actually think about the problem and uh, sure. Uh, sure. and uh, and at least come forth with it. You can say, hey, you know what? That's something that I wouldn't solve right now because I'm short of time, short of time. Yes. Uh, but that's something that I expect you to think about. Uh, and right. I felt that the dispatcher and KV store, uh, the, there were, there was redundant, uh, um, responsibility and these are redundant components maybe we can discuss more but uh, having more multiple components store the same data has two issues one is uh, uh, it is more prone to failure uh, because you are increasing the number of components the next uh, the second is data consistency issues if you have like data stored in both places how will you make sure the data is consistent and uh, in case of a failure, which one is the source of truth, right? So that's something that uh, you may want to talk about. See, uh, uh, in this case, what you're considering that I'm storing that is the same, just, just to make sure that I understood that part. Yeah, you, you said like the dispatcher and KV, right? Uh, so the dispatcher loads the data from KV about uh, video ID to gateway ID, I presume, or does it always read from KV? I, it's all, uh, always read that, from KV, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so it's probably a stateful service. I, I, yeah, it, it, it would have been better to actually mention that. It's just a okay. the service uh, reading from KV. Uh, but yeah. even in that case, like you need more replicas of that database. I, I don't think even if the day, so there are two dimensions to this problem, right? One is the data, the next is the number of requests that are being accessed. Um, so you may be able to fit the data, but the number of requests uh, coming into that KV store 
might be more than like so radius and kb stores generally support the uh, number of connections in the order of tens of thousands but i'm assuming that uh, uh, yeah. based on dispatchers uh, and the number of requests coming in and the amount of updates right uh, it might it might actually surpass the amount of connections that uh, a single kv store could support a single instance of yeah. kv store could support i i uh, mentioned so, that uh, we could actually have the the replicas um of uh, the redis and uh but that yeah uh, um, that's an issue yeah and in that case uh, in a multi region setup how would we actually like place the replicas uh, intelligently uh yeah, to so, avoid yeah to mm -hmm. avoid uh, to avoid uh, latency delays because you are accessing a single KV store, right? So that's something that uh, you may want to talk about. Uh, yeah, so th that one, let me um, uh, give you um, that uh, response. Uh, so basically, uh, I, I couldn't actually go to that because I, maybe I, I spent a lot of time in something that was not uh, really valuable. Uh, but in a multi uh, data center uh, architecture, I um, talked after the, 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 the interview that we could actually uh, do two things. One is the subscription per the dispatcher. So the, the, in this case, the regions would actually have their own uh, key value store and what is being communicated is the dispatcher, right? Uh, and the broadcast of the dispatcher is what uh, um, something that works because the data is really small like the dispatcher functionality is really identifying gateways so because of that is way less than actually the number of connections that are going uh, on the gateway side yeah cool okay cool uh yeah so yeah the other things maybe you could have considered is uh, ask questions like hey, you know what do we have to set every single reaction to everybody because that ensures a lot of fan out or mm -hmm. is it okay to actually batch right because there are millions of reactions uh, uh, being fanned out to millions of people at the same time is it okay to uh, to kind of batch it and uh, how can you intelligently batch it if there are only three viewers maybe you don't need batching but if there are millions of viewers you can actually batch and set the data instead of actually like pumping every event uh, so that's something that uh, you could have gone into. So these are things that I actually remembered. One thing that uh, I, I wasn't good at is actually noting down everything because I was interacting with you. Uh, but uh, I feel like this is decent enough feedback that you can improve more. Yeah, that, that's a lot. Thanks a lot for that, Z. That so it was very thorough and. Uh... Um, yeah, I really appreciated um, um, the invitation and uh, everything that I learned here is like very, very, um, it, it doesn't have a price, right? So uh, really thank you for your time and the community as well. I've been learning a lot and I hope that I can actually do a better job next sessions. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for actually, uh, accepting my invitation, folks. I've been really uh, for other folks on the call. I've been really having a hard time uh, finding people and also finding interviewers. Uh, so uh, uh, please like post the.